How's it going, Reactors? I have just seen Fast X. Yes, the 11th film in this franchise, including Hobbs and Shaw. So you know what we must do. We must reel in this review. You see me shining, baby. Now, with a Fast and Furious film, you have to know and be self-aware of what you're about to watch. Like for me, I know what I'm getting myself into when I am reeling in a Fast and Furious film. These films are over the top. They are just blockbusters. Some people say you just gotta turn off your brain and enjoy. For me, I want entertainment. That is why I go to the movies. That is why I reel in anything that I watch. I am just going into this film to have fun. And to tell you guys straight to it, I had fun for what that film is. Is that film ridiculous? Oh my God, it is. Is it absurd? Yes. Is it crazy? Of course. Is the story amazing? No, but it is a blockbuster film, first and foremost. It is what you go to the movies for, to be entertained, to buy a nice big bag of popcorn, a big drink, and just sit back and relax and just enjoy the ride. That is what Fast X is. And that is what Fast X gave me. Now, with Fast X, Dom and his family must confront the most lethal opponent they have ever faced. A terrifying threat emerging from the shadows of the past who is fueled with blood revenge. And who is determined to shatter this family and destroy everything and everyone that Dom loves forever. And that's the plot of Fast X. Dante. That is who is out for revenge. This movie connects to Fast Five, a film that I love, a film that is still my number one film in this franchise. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people agree with me that Fast Five is the best film in this franchise. It is what amplified this franchise, and it's what introduced us to the crazy, over-the-top action scenes. And then from there, they just upped the ante and just kept on outdoing themselves. And it's the same here. And with Fast X, yeah, there are tons of ridiculous scenes, over-the-top scenes that are just gonna make you laugh at what you're watching. But I will have to say this, compared to Fast 9, they toned it down, in which I love. With Fast 9, it's, not my favorite. Did I find entertainment? Yes. But it's very hard for me to re-watch that film. I recently re-watched that film, but when I initially watched Fast 9, it automatically took me out once the two dudes from the ghetto decided to go to space. But we don't have anything like this. No one's going to space. There are some over-the-top stunts. You know what you're expecting with a fast film. It's all here. It's all here. They're trying to outdo themselves, but they just don't do it as much. It's kind of, uh, I, I would have to say, taking it back a little bit from what they did with Fast 9. It's like they saw like the reception of how us audience experienced with Fast 9 and, and was like, you know what, maybe we should tone down uh, what we did in Fast 9. And they decide to do that, but they give us the ridiculous scenes as well. So there's that too. Focusing with this story, Dante is out for revenge against Dom's family because he's the son of Reyes. Reyes is the villain from Fast 5. As you know, the family and Dom decided to burn his money and burn his empire to the ground. Not only that, The Rock's character, Hobbs, killed Dante's dad, Reyes. So there you have that. So this man is just out for revenge, but most importantly, he wants to make Dom and his family suffer. And does he do that? Yes, he does in this film. Jason Momoa is amazing as Dante. A lot of people are comparing him to the Joker, and yes. I'm Dante. Enchante. They are 100% correct. This man is cuckoo crazy, or as I say, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. That is what Dante is in this film. Jason Momoa brings this character to life. He is flamboyant. He paints his nails. He paints the nails of his enemies that he's killed crazy. He rears his hair in a ponytail. He's comedic. 
He's menacing, but he's balancing it all very well. But he's a guy that you can take seriously, but not take seriously. But there are times where Dante does strike fear in Dom's eyes. In the eyes of Dom that I've never seen before. I've never seen Dominic Toretto have fear before. And in this film, he experiences fear like none other. I mean, Dante is a force to be reckoned with. The man is the Joker in here, and it's going to hit with some people, and it might not hit with some people. But for me, it worked. I enjoyed Jason Momoa. Now focusing on this cast, they are great. You guys know the Fast family like I do, like the back of my hand. This cast have been playing these characters for quite some time. I expected them to just be the people that I've grown to know and they are great in this film vin diesel uh michelle rodriguez letty that couple they're still the same roman tedge tyrese gibson and Ludacris. they bring in the laughs like nothing else in this film and it's something that brings a smile to me whenever i'm watching a fast and furious film and it's the same here you got mia han Little nobodies in this film, John Cena as Jacob, but also you have Little B, Little Brian, uh, played by Leo Perry. For the kid, usually when it comes to kid actors, they can be annoying, but Little B does a lot in this film, and I enjoy every scene that he has with Uncle Jacob, John Cena. They are a pair in this film. Not only that, Vin Diesel works well with Leo Perry his son, Little B. But Little B takes out some people. I'm pretty sure he killed a lot of people. I don't know how you guys are gonna feel about that. Oh, no, you're good, you're good. Okay, uh, song lyrics, stub toes, and cannon cars. Yeah. Also, Charlie Theron as Cypher is back. She is great. Cypher versus Letty, that fight that you see in the trailer, I've been waiting for that fight ever since. Cypher decided to lay her lips on Dom and stare into Letty's eyes back in Fast 8. So that fight was worth it and it pays off. And can't forget Ramsey. As you guys know, she pairs up with Tedge and Roman just like in the previous films. So you know that dynamic trio is top tier and i can't forget jason statham too as well he's in this film for a very short time but in that short time it was good and our new cast members are brie larson as tess she was good in this film for what she's able to do <laughs> but i can tell she's having fun being in the fast franchise but as you guys know this is just part one of a trilogy yes vin diesel has came out that he wants to make Fast X Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. It was initially Part 1 and Part 2, but yeah, this man wants to make a trilogy as the final act to the Fast family and to this Fast franchise. And lastly, we have Isabel as Danielle Meliquar. Hopefully I said your name correctly. She is beautiful in this film, but not only that, she is a great addition, and I love how they connect and weave her story into this franchise but that's the big ensemble cast now with this big ensemble cast here's my criticism there are times where we are introduced to these cast members to these characters and nothing comes of it they are introduced then they leave and then you don't see them anymore for the whole film and another thing about all of these characters not enough screen time our cast is split into groups majority of this film and usually they are all together in these fast films but this is the first time where I felt like wow why are we not seeing Dom with this group or why are we not seeing Tedge interact with this person or why are we not seeing Letty team up with this person they are split apart quite a lot in this film and I felt that but talking about the action like I said it's over the top you guys know what to expect. It's a fast film. You're either going to be turned on by it <laughs> or turned off by it. All right? It's a Fast and Furious film. They're over the top. 
this is the 10th film in this franchise, not including Hobbs and Shaw. I'm so used to this craziness, ridiculousness that they give us that I am content and I am okay with it. Now with the comedy, you know it's spread all throughout the Fast films and it works here, but mainly on the shoulders of Roman and Tej, like I said before. And also the music hits, you know that. The Fast films, in my opinion, don't miss out on the music. Matter of fact, I think the soundtracks for the Fast films never disappoint and they don't disappoint here. And it's great to hear the many artists, uh, the many beats blast throughout the theater speakers. I enjoyed the music. Now with this film, there are tons of cameos. I won't spoil it here. All that I'm going to say is that I enjoyed the cameos for the most part. The first cameo shocked me. It was in a funny scene, a drawn out funny scene, but I enjoyed it. Then there was another cameo in which I was like, you know what, I called it. I saw this coming way back then, so I'm not surprised by this, but I have so many questions as to why this person is now back in the franchise. So there's that. And then you get the big time cameo in which, if you don't know, I'm not gonna say it, but if you do know, you must have been on Twitter when they broke the news. That cameo scene in the after credit scene is perfect. It got me hyped. It got my theater hyped. I am so ready for Fast 11 just because of that cameo, man. Just because of that cameo, it had me hyped. That was awesome! Overall, I went into this movie for entertainment. I left the theater feeling entertained. <laughs> Do you like surprises? I adore them. Fast X gets a 3.5 out of 5 stars from me. Should you reel this in? If you like these films, yes. If you don't like these films, no. Sit at home. There is no rush to go see this movie. But if you love this franchise, and number one of all, if you are self-aware and know what to expect when it comes to these films, you're going to enjoy this movie. But if you hate the previous Fast films and you don't like these characters and you're sick and tired of these over top unexplainable ways that people survive then you're not gonna like this movie so yeah the critics are hating this film which I'm not surprised but the audience on the tomato meter are loving this movie I smell magic. Make up your own mind on if you want to go see Fast X. I'm just simply telling you, if you love these films, you'll enjoy it. If you hate these films, sit at home. Now, that is my review for Fast X. I will now give you a ranking, my personal ranking of the Fast franchise. Coming in at last place is Too Fast, Too Furious. I enjoy Brian and I enjoy Roman and I enjoy that bromance. Not only that, I love the introduction of Tej. I love those three characters, but everything else in that movie I do not like and I have a very hard time finishing that movie, let alone going back to rewatch it. Coming in at 10th place is Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. You probably have this super high on your list. You might even have this as your favorite film of the franchise, but for me, it's ranked really low. I love the drifting. I love the music. I love the setting. I like Sean, even though the actor is trying to play a a teenager. I like Twinkie, but most importantly, I like Han, and I think his death scene, death scene was really good in that movie. But other than that, it's a film that I have yet to go back to in quite some time. And that's due to me, you know, watching it and feeling kind of bored watching it. Sitting in my ninth spot is Hobbs and Shaw. I was entertained. But the fact that this is a spinoff film, it was missing family. So a little part of me just wasn't that invested in Hobbs and Shaw. So that is why it is ranked at the bottom of my list. Taking the number eight spot is Fast 9. A lot of people do not like this movie and I can understand why. They decided to do the most absurd thing, which was send two dudes from the ghetto to space. Yes, that is when I checked out in that film, it absolutely took me out. I recently watched that film, and I gotta admit, I was still entertained by it, but I understand why people got turned off by that film 
and it's valid and it happened to me but yeah that was when that film just did not work for me at all so that is why it is ranked in that spot taking the seventh spot is the fate of the furious like i said these films entertain me yes the eighth film in this franchise did entertain me but it was creeping into that factor in which i just could not believe what i was watching it was all over the place the story was all over the place i didn't like that dom was separate from the family not only that i felt like the chemistry uh with some of our cast members just wasn't the same like it was in the previous film so that is why fast eight is sitting at the seventh spot coming in at the sixth place spot is fast and furious a lot of people do not like this film and I understand that it's a guilty pleasure of mine but what I do like about that movie is the chemistry between Dom and Brian it worked for me and it propelled us into fast five now we have made it to the top five and sitting at number five is recently fast 10 you guys know why I've already talked about this film but that sits at number five I enjoyed fast 10 way more than the previous films that I just listed. Sitting at the fourth spot is the very first film, The Fast and the Furious. It's nostalgia, I love it, but it's not better than the films above it. But I find myself going back because it feels good to, you know, go back to the basics of just racing of what this franchise initially was. Taking the third spot is Fast 6. I find myself re-watching this film tons of times. The action hits, even though it's absurd. That long runway is crazy and bonkers, but everything in this film delivers. The comedy is by far the best in this franchise. Fast 6 has the most jokes in it, and they all hit for me. I love the action, I love the racing scene between Dom and Letty. Not only that, I love the team up with Hobbs and Dom. Everything worked for Fast 6, that is why it sits at number 3. Now sitting in that second spot is Furious 7. A beautiful film through and through, James Wan nailed it. Yes, it's absurd, yes, the, the action is over the top. I was used to it, I was okay with it, I started to become self-aware of what this franchise was turning into. A blockbuster action flick where you just relax and enjoy what you're watching. That is what Fast 7 brought me. Not only that, the perfect send off to Paul Walker. Yes, this franchise should have ended at 7, but it didn't and now we're at Fast 10. But I enjoyed Furious 7, Fast 7, however you want to call it. I reeled it in and I would gladly rewatch that anytime and anywhere and you obviously know the number one spot everyone's number one spot if it's not your number one spot i would be shocked but fast five is peak it is what amplified it is what energized this franchise into a big blockbuster not only that it is what blew this franchise up into a billion dollar box office hit fast five hits for me i love it through and through matter of fact it's a five out of five movie a 10 out of 10 it's my perfect fast film. It is what I wanted. It is what I would like these films to go back to. Over the top action, but not too over the top. Still a little bit grounded. That is what Fast Five is to me. Not only that, we got the addition of The Rock in that film, in which a lot of people will say The Rock is what helped boost this franchise to where it is, and they're not wrong. Matter of fact, out of all the characters that The Rock has played, Hobbs, is my number one character that I love from The Rock. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people can agree with me on that one. But Fast Five is phenomenal. I watch that movie quite a lot. Just that bank vault chase scene is absurd. Absurd, but damn is it good to watch. So there you guys have it. That is my ranking of the Fast franchise. I love this franchise. I will keep watching these movies in this franchise. I'm not jumping off this train. I was there from the beginning. I might as well ride it out all the way to the very end. But this is going to conclude this ranking and review. I will catch you guys in the next Reel It In review or the next Reel It In reaction. I'm Reel It In Miles. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.